Alright, hey everybody, um, this is Taylor. Today is Sunday, the 25th of July. I'm gonna announce the date just for the hell of it, why not? And this week's topic is being trans with mental diagnoses. And like how that intertwines the intersections of it all, I guess. This is cool for me just because I'm a psych major and a woman gender sexuality studies double, but it might be a minor. So, like, this is kind of what I want to do with my life, looking at the intersections of this thing. So, I'm really stoked about this topic. I'm just going to go right into it. Um, myself, personally, I was diagnosed at age 3 with Autism Spectrum Disorder and Asperger Syndrome. So, for a good... Trying to think how many years that was. From, like age three to like fifth grade so I feel like that's like ten yep yeah, ten I did the math out don't sorry for that little break there um yeah so it was a solid seven years of my life that I was in intensive like speech therapy and stuff just because I wasn't up to par as much as the other students were, but I still was a really quiet person. Um, so that period went through, middle school happened, everyone's middle school is shit. Like, I, I haven't met a person where I've asked if they like middle school and they've said yes, just because it's such a self-discovery period that you don't even know. And the whole thing of wanting to fit in in middle school kind of intertwined with that, and I just didn't fit in. I was very quiet, shy, didn't really have too many friends, and I got bullied for it. And that kind of spiraled into a negative downfall for me. It was like bullying, and then in seventh grade my parents got divorced, so I was dealing with a lot of that, and my mom's alcoholism was intertwined with that. So it was just a lot on my plate, starting in sixth grade, going into seventh and by 8th grade, I was a mess, like, emotionally. I was doing a lot of things I regret. And they weren't drugs. I'm going to state that now. I'm just going to keep it non-verbatim. I'm not going to say the word, but y'all probably get what I mean by didn't treat myself the way I should have. Um, and that takes me into high school. Y'all are getting my life story. And... Freshman year of high school, I got diagnosed with depression, social anxiety, slash general anxiety, and an eating disorder at the time. Just because I didn't realize what was going on with my body, and I didn't like it. And I didn't treat myself how I should have been. So I passed out <laughs> in my freshman year of high school in the kitchen because I went to a Vogue school, so... Like, we had, like, a culinary shop, and I was in there, and I just passed the fuck out. And I was on my way to the nurse, too. So, like, that kind of shows, like, I kind of knew what was going on, but I didn't. And I was very, very dehydrated at the time. So, like, it started a whole other mess, and I was very, very low. Um, then spiraling into sophomore year, I really didn't do much. Sophomore year and junior year were, like, grace periods for me. Because, like, I was diagnosed with depression. I was sad as fuck. I was anxious as fuck. I didn't really talk to a lot of people besides who were in my shop, mainly. And I had, like, a few good friends outside of that. And I made a lot of friends online. But, like, that's the basis of, like, my friendship circle. Like, I made a few friends at concerts and stuff. Like, I didn't really have the best circle. But I was a well-liked person. My mom told me I was well-liked, honestly, like, I'm gonna go with it, because she was... We had this conversation a while ago because I didn't really think I fit into a friendship group that well, but, like, she said I had good ties, I just cut people out really easily, which is true. But, yeah, so, at the age of 15, I started recognizing that, you know... I am not a cishet straight girl that 
I was kind of portraying a role of, even though I never really dressed up. Like, I never really tried to be someone I wasn't. I had long hair till I was 16, uh, 17. But, like, 15 was that point where I was recognizing that, you know, I'm not where I should be. And so, came out as lesbian. Stuff got better, but, like, I still got shit. Um, then I identified with that label for a solid year. And it was at age 16. Kind of 17, like, around that winter when I realized, you know... I'm trans, and it brought a new wave of depression on me, because I didn't recognize this. My depression was linked to everything in the past, but the fact that I hid my gender identity, and I didn't speak about it, and I let it sit in the back of my mind, in the bottom of my stomach, and I went through every day questioning myself was the most heartbreaking thing I've ever done in my life. And so, age 17, came out to my therapist, we cut off my hair, my hair is really short now in comparison to how it was when I first cut off, because my mom was worried, but you know, I just told her I wanted my hair short, and she went with it, I didn't tell her I was trans until I came back from a family vacation, because I was sitting outside crying, because I didn't want to wear a bath, like a girl's designated bikini, because I felt so uncomfy. So, like, I told her, and she didn't believe me, and that put me into more depression, but I was okay with myself online, which was nice. And then I dealt with it until, like, November 2014, and then I came out again, and people started accepting me. So, in spring of 2014, i now off my anxiety meds. I've been off my anxiety and antidepressants since... The, sum, the spring of 2014, I was on anxiety, uh, antidepressants for a little while, just because of school, but what you gonna do? And my diagnoses for ASD and the Asperger's were removed last summer. So, I'm just gonna say, like, it gets better. Like, I know it's a shitty thing to say, because, like, sometimes it doesn't, but, like, really, it does, like... I'm proud of everyone who is, like, here and surviving because being the intersections of being trans and talking about the mental illnesses that are associated with it aren't really brought up much, and that's something that kind of irritates me, but I never really talk about it. So, like, this is an amazing topic, and I'm stoked for it. And that's why this is eight minutes long. But, yeah. I'm just gonna put my URL below, everything like that. So, like, if y'all are dealing with shit, and you need someone to listen, I'm always there. Even if it, you want to just call. I have a phone. I will call you. <laughs> it does get better, and, like, let's just t start a dialogue on this. Because, like, that's what we need right now. Okay, so, updates in my life. So, I am officially 25 day days post-op with Dr. Perik in Springfield. These are my incisions. You can kind of see them. They're healing really well. Um, I am nine months on testosterone as of tomorrow, the 27th of July, which is really rad. I'm stoked. Um, and I got a haircut, which I like, because I like buzz cuts on me now, which is, like, really cool, because, like I said, when I first cut off all my hair, it was really shaggy. I look like a dog. But yeah, I hope y'all have an awesome week. I will see you next Sunday on Ambiguity. Cool. Bye.